Hello everyone, this video is for the Bose DAB module. Um, this is used with the Bose Wave 2 music system and it's an additional accessory that and it has to be added on to the Bose Wave music system if you want to listen to DAB. Now what's experienced with a lot of these modules is that the <coughs> connector here has pins in it and sometimes what happens is that these pins get bent or sometimes even get broken and if you see Bose don't repair these anymore because it's just out of date and they're real old so if something like this a connector like this has pins broken I mean it looks you're pretty stuffed then isn't it because you can't really do anything and these connectors are sealed so you can't really replace them in any shape or form and you can't even get the cable so what I'm going to show you is how to replace this connector exactly as it is and get these pins exactly back on as they are with using something similar so what we need now is an extension lead that you can buy off eBay which is basically an extension lead to the sound link which will say the Bose link. So this usually, some of the times, these these are supplied with the modules, and sometimes they're not, and you can buy them for about fifteen pounds or something. So they come with the um, they have the connector in it, and they also have an extension port. What it means is that you, if your DAB module is working absolutely fine, you can use cables like this to extend this module, and so rather than putting it right on top of the unit. You can put it somewhere else and hide it or something so it's not visible um, in front of the unit itself so what we need now is to have one of these and i've done it already so i've just tested it to make sure that it will works and um, that's why i'm making this video to make sure that um, if someone else is experiencing something similar they can actually if they're very good with uh, a soldering iron and um, bit of good at DIY expert they can actually sort this out at home rather than um, throwing this module away or saying that it's faulty so what we need to do now is I'll uh, quickly demonstrate this so once you have a cable like this which is which is a broken pin what we need to do is to pretty much that would be that this connector here would be connected over here at the end of this and what you need to do is pretty much cut it off to the point where you would then take the shell off so what we're saying is we will cut this out and as you can see I have completely taken it out so the shell will come off and you will also have the extra cover which is pretty much this bit here you have to pull that off as well once that off comes off we will see something like this coming out of there so here I've broken all the pins off so we can test them and what it means is that all these cables where you can actually expose them and one bit I forgot to mention is that before you actually do all of that you can actually just cut this off as well so the cables come off and what we would be left with is something like this and then once all the pins are broken off as well and what you need to do is take all the wires and test each wires point and the color either you can write it down uh, on a piece of paper or you can do it one by one so what we're doing here is that testing the connections to so say point one will connect to say gray point two so you do line by line from going from three four two so you say three point one then point two point three point four and so on and you would then see these colors connecting to any of those. Also, you, this particular wire, which is here, the big thick one is actually ground, which is always on the end of the wire. So you will see this coming out, the thick one. So you can just add these all of these together at the end of it. So what I've done here is that I've taken one of these and then cut it. So that's been cut. So let me show you here, it's been cut here, so that cable is now cut, so we don't have it, so you can, this is 
this, this cable is not actually used because this is the female end, so you don't really need that. So you can put that on the side. The other side, you will have one of these, and which will look like this. So you're going to cut this off and expose all the wires at the end. And pretty much the task would be to test the continuity of pin number one going back to the wire and then coordinating the same wire with the same pin here. Now the colors won't match. So the colors from pin one will be say for example yellow here. But on this one here, on this particular cable, you won't find pin one to be yellow, even though the colors may be the same. It will be some, some other colors. So that's why you need a multimeter to test each pin with each color. And by doing that, you would just solder pretty much one by one each wire. And once these are all done, the best thing to do is also use something called like a, a shrinking sleeve. Um, heat shrinking sleeve on each wire so that makes it nice and tidy so when at the end if you tape it up or um, if you put some kind of a, um, a a bigger heat wrap on it um, they don't seem to join together and they're, they're shielded pretty much on their own because as you can see these they've all been you know done, done individually and as you can see from the colors none of the colors actually match because you've got We've got um, red going into I think blue, then you've got orange, red going into black, white going into grey. So yeah, they're, they're different colours, but at the end, the result that we have is a working module, and we have an excellent connector now, which is almost you know good as new. The only thing is that we have a joint, but that doesn't matter because nobody actually pulls and tugs to it. Um, once it's in, it's in. And um, the same logic we can apply to any of the actual Bose systems. If these pins are broken, you can just fix them by just using one of these cables and they will just work amazingly. And um, I, I hope this helps um, a lot of customers or people because um, I find that there isn't any video out there that would actually help us and to fix these connectors once the pins are broken they seem to be pretty useless to be honest because you can't open these or solder them either but uh, yeah we are talking about a lot of wires here but um, if we make a note of each color of the wire and each pin where they co coordinate to the best part is that when we cut this connector out we have to make sure that these wires don't break because we really need to know where these wires belong. Because if these wires are pulled out of it on the socket completely, then we won't be able to trace the wires where the which pin belongs to each wire. And that's the important part to make sure. So we expose this connector and then count the pins and the wires, write them down on a piece of paper if we can, just to make sure, and then do the same with the other side and then just solder them in one by one and the best way is to solder them in because we can't afford to um, just tighten them manually with tape because they would just come apart and it's just a lot of hard work goes into this so it's the best way to solder them in so they are you know you can't really break them apart well all the best once this is um, all done just wrap tape around it um, that and, and pretty much that's it and um, maybe here we will have a working Bose DAB module thanks for watching any questions happy to ask